Hello, and welcome to the Envision National Youth Leadership Forum Business Innovation Six Days to Startup Post-Enrollment Webinar. You will find this webinar most helpful if you have already enrolled your student in NYLF Business Innovation for the summer. My name is Danielle Thomas, and I am the Program Manager for the Business Innovation Program. I have been working programs for Envision since 2009 and have been continuously working with the Business Innovation Program since 2013. My background is in business administration and education. I'm thrilled to be a part of the Envision team providing the best experiences for your students this summer. First, we would like to welcome you and your student to the 2019 Business Innovation Program. We cannot wait to meet your student and begin this wonderful summer adventure. The webinar is equipped with a dashboard to the right of your screen. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type and submit them there. We will have a 20 minute content section followed by a short Q&A based on the questions we received throughout the webinar. Juliana Rowe, Program Coordinator for the Business Conference, and Sarah Barados, Product Marketer, will be monitoring the dashboard. If a pertinent question arises, we will try and answer it right away. Otherwise, we will save all questions for the end. At the end of the webinar, there will also be a quick survey to let us know how helpful this was to you. Please be honest in your feedback so we can alter the webinars to better suit you and your scholars' needs. A tidbit of information before we get started. At Envision, we use the term scholar to refer to students. Now let's get started. In today's webinar, we will cover topics that we get the most questions about at this point in the process. If you have topics other than these that you would like to hear about, don't forget to use the dialog box to your right. Write us a note and we'll be sure to follow up. On today's agenda, we will be covering accessing your online information, the mandatory travel form, how to prepare for the program, safety and security, important reminders, and contact information. First up, accessing your online information. At this point in the process, you should have already enrolled your scholar and been prompted to create login information. In order to access your scholar's account, you will first need to visit envisionexperience.com. At the top right corner of the homepage, you will see login. Click on that. A dialog box will appear with two options. Click enrolled student. You will then be sent to a page with text boxes to input your login criteria. Enter your email address and password for your Scholar account. If you forgot your password, click Forgot Password to begin the password recovery process. You will then be taken to a Scholar-specific account page. In the top right of the page, you will click on Enrollment Forms and Info. This will load a page that lists all forms available for your Scholar. Several items listed on this page are required for attendance at NYLF Business Innovation and or have deadlines that need to be met in order to come to the program and process the information as well as have it on file when your scholar arrives for day one. Please pay close attention to the required items and deadlines. Under the required category header, you will see several forms. The mandatory travel form is required for attendance to the program. This form will have you provide information on how your scholar is getting to the program site and how they will be getting home. There are options for both airport and on-site drop-off. This form is not locked to one submission. After you have filled in the form, should you find the need to make updates or changes, you will be able to reaccess the form and revise it. As you begin to complete items on the enrollment forms and info page, check marks will appear. 
These check marks indicate you have completed a form or opened a document. As part of the Business Innovation Program, scholars will be asked to complete pre-program assignments. Our program will provide scholars with a unique academic experience that will help develop advanced leadership skills. Before we delve into the summer program learning environment, it is valuable to ascertain each scholar's concept of what leadership means to them and establish strengths and opportunities for growth. With this information, we will be able to provide programming to develop each individual scholar. You will find the pre-program assignments in the category Academic Resources. By clicking on Academic Preparation and Pre-Program Assignments, a PDF document will appear explaining the task in more detail. Your pre-program tasks are Feedback for Understanding Emerging Leaders, also known as FUEL, and PARIN, a social and emotional learning assessment tool. Please note the deadlines for completion. Under the category preparing for your program, you'll see roommate request application. Sometimes scholars from the same school attend the business program and would like to be roomed together. If there is someone attending the conference that your scholar would like to room with, please fill out this form. Take note, this is optional but does have a hard deadline for completing. If your scholar needs to make a room request for anything other than being placed with a specific person, please contact our admissions department. The next item we would like to point out is the planning, travel, and dress code checklist. When you click on the link, it will load a PDF file. Here you see listed in detail the dress code and packing reminders. The Business Innovation Program enjoys an excellent reputation in our communities as a result of our prestigious students. To ensure this is maintained, all scholars are expected to maintain a high standard of appearance. The dress code consists of program attire, which is similar to relaxed professional, casual attire, and career attire, which is full professional dress paired with comfortable shoes. Take some time to review the dress code in detail to ensure your scholar is prepared with the proper and enough clothing. Other information you will find in this document, scholar money spending while in program and what to bring in your luggage. We will provide linens and a towel for each scholar. There are communal bathrooms on each hallway, so we do suggest bringing shower shoes. It is highly recommended that scholars bring a laptop computer or tablet to the program, as our simulation requires computer assistance. Additionally, the dorms at Yale University are not air conditioned, so we highly recommend bringing a small portable fan for their dorm room. In the required section, you will also see student information and medical authorization and information forms. These forms are a good place to start to let us know what dietary restrictions your scholar might have. If there is more detail to add beyond filling out this form, please contact our Office of Admissions so we can record these accommodations. Additionally, if your scholar has special dietary needs, we will introduce them to the chef on the first day so they are aware of those needs. Yale Dining is centered around sustainability and healthy eating. There are numerous vegan and vegetarian options at every meal. On campus, meals are served cafeteria style. There will be a salad bar and plenty of entrees with a rotating menu each day. And all foods will be labeled with their ingredients. There are also vending machines available at the bottom floor of the dormitory. The Business Innovation Program is a nut-free conference. There are vending machines on campus that do offer candies with nuts. Scholars will be told not to purchase any of those items for the safety of all scholars and staff at the conference. Our dining times are preset by the university, so scholars are encouraged to bring snacks. If you do send snacks with your scholar, send nut-free snacks. Given the nature of allergies of both the staff and scholars, a staff member will have to confiscate any snacks containing or made with nut products. 
The business program also has a number of offsite visits where meals will be enjoyed away from the campus. A good rule of thumb is to bring enough spending money to purchase one meal per day. If you do have any questions or concerns, please reach out to our Office of Admissions and their information will be given at the end of this webinar. Next, let's transition into program and schedule highlights. The business program takes place entirely in the New Haven, Connecticut area. Students and staff will reside at Yale University. Our dormitory is called Polly Murray College, the newest dormitory on Yale's campus. The picture at the bottom is a picture of the dormitory entrance. Our program is made up of a three-tier curricular approach to experiential learning. The combination of these events contribute to a holistic experience that will build your scholars' leadership skills, provide career experience, and promote collaboration with like-minded peers. Listed here are some of the activities that our scholars will participate in. Our simulations and seminars are designed to enhance scholar knowledge in a specified area of content. These meetings provide an opportunity to examine leadership or career specific roles by exchanging ideas, overcoming challenges, and pushing innovation. Program site visits give, give scholars an opportunity to explore their interests outside of the program housing site. They are meant to help get them more engaged, intellectually curious, and both goal and career focused. Our scholars will be visiting Upward Hartford, a large incubator and co-working space for startups in the Hartford area. Scholars will receive a tour of the facility, hear from a panel of entrepreneurs, and pitch their business ideas to innovators that have been in their very shoes. Finally, scholars will hear from experts in the fields of business, finance, entrepreneurship, and more. The speakers will help create a roadmap to help scholars reach their life and career aspirations. At the end, the end of each of the speaking segments, students will be given the opportunity to ask questions to these professionals. Along with these hands-on activities and challenges, scholars will also have time to spend off-site where they will get to explore their host city with friends and crowdsource their ideas. Now let's talk about some important safety and security items. The safety and security of our students is the number one priority. We will now go through a number of items to help answer any questions that you might have. Scholars are led through the program and cared for in small groups by trained advisors. These staff members are very experienced with students and have undergone extensive training fingerprinting, and background checks. Many staff members are educators outside of the summer months and work year round to provide safe and high quality experience for students. During the first group meeting, scholars will take part in a briefing on the policies and procedures of the program. This will include information on who to contact in an emergency, attendance, offsite safety procedures, in venue safety protocols. They will also practice the emergency evacuation plan and their first small group meeting. Envision also has several safety processes in place that we teach the scholars and ask them to adhere to throughout the program. All scholars and staff must wear their name badges anytime they are outside of their sleeping room and staff conduct attendance at every group meeting and anytime they depart a location on the bus. This name badge will also have important emergency contact information printed on the back. And all students are required to travel with a buddy at all times. Every evening, our scholars are dismissed to their sleeping rooms. Staff will conduct room checks nightly to ensure that all students are in their assigned rooms for the night and distribute any important information needed for the next day's events. Once room checks are complete, scholars are not permitted to leave their room until breakfast the following morning. Attendance is taken several times throughout the day, including at meals, business group meetings, before, during, and after trips, and before bed. If there is a missing scholar, 
we have an emergency protocol that begins to locate the child and return them to their group. The advisor to scholar ratio is one to 25. The scholar, scholars are monitored all day by their assigned advisor. Outside of the advisor staff, we have a large support staff that also interacts with the scholars throughout the day and ensures the programs are well equipped to provide the best experience possible. Staff rooms are intermixed with scholar rooms on each hallway and scholars are given an overnight emergency program number to call if they need assistance. If at any point scholars need to leave the room in the middle of the night, they are instructed to contact the overnight scholar experience team member to escort them wherever they need to go. When an incident occurs, our staff spring into action. We will contact you if an incident occurs, behavioral or medical, with your student. And all incidents are recorded and reported to the program office. We will make sure that you are involved and informed at every step. We consider an incident to be anything that occurs during the program which affects your student and is not prearranged per the itinerary. This could include medical issues, weather impacting the schedule, lost items, travel disruptions, etc. Incidents may originate on site or a parent could call into our office with a concern. Our phones are managed 24 seven. Every single incident is documented and follow up occurs in coordination with on site staff to resolve. Now to wrap up, before we get into our question and answer portion, we'll go over some important reminders. These are the four reminders to ensure that your scholar gets off to a successful start to this summer's business innovation program. First, make sure you book your travel to and from the session location and complete the online travel form. Next, make sure to complete all forum requirements on your student portal paying special attention to those that are listed under the required section. Next, complete your pre-program assignments, which for our program is the Feedback for Understanding Emerging Leaders, or FUEL, and PARIN. And lastly, be ready to embark on an adventure of a lifetime. So thank you so much for attending our webinar. We really appreciate the time taken to spend with us today. Our chat has been very active, and I thank you in advance for being able to submit your questions to us. It seems like one of the major questions that has been uh, raised is about the dress code. So we have three types of dress code for our program. One is called the career attire, which is most similar to professional attire. That's where the students will need to be in either some type of suit, they need to have a suit jacket on with them, Females can wear a dress, pants, or skirt, and males also need to have not only a jacket, but also a tie. When we'll be wearing the career attire is things like our group photo, because we love to have our students in their nice professional attire for that photo, as well as our big simulation when the students are pitching their business ideas to our Shark Tank panel. Another one of our dress codes is called program attire. And that's most similar to what is known as business casual or relaxed professional. That's where we still want the students to be in some type of relaxed professional garments, so slacks or skirt or a dress, but we can relax the need for a coat so they can take off their coat or sweater, making sure that they're for females, their arms are still covered and the gentlemen do not need to wear a tie. Lastly, we have our casual attire and this is going to be worn most evenings. This is where the students can be in jeans. They can have on more of their casual sneakers. They can have on t-shirts, but making sure that they are still adhering to our dress code. So they shouldn't have on any type of uh, sweatpants or anything that has a, a logo on it. So make sure you're really paying attention to our dress code checklist that is located on your student portal. I see another question here. 
is will the off-site excursions be supervised? And yes, they will be. So when the students are going to Upward Hartford, which is going to be one of their major off-site excursions, they will be in a motor coach that will be private. Our staff will be on that motor coach with them. While they're at the site visit, our staff will be right there alongside them taking the tour and being with them while the panel is going on. When they're crowdsourcing, they are going to be staying in groups of at least three people or more, most likely within their uh, business teams, because they'll be crowdsourcing as well as getting their dinner for the evening. Our staff will not be with them at all times. However, we'll give them a briefing sheet that will have the boundaries that they are to stay within as well as we'll have a staff member posted at one or two centrally located uh, locations. So in case the students have any questions or they get separated from their group, they always know they can find a staff member at that designated meeting location. And they also have the phone numbers on the back of their name badge to call in case they get into any distress. Another question I saw, will the information from the webinar be available after this is over? Yes, it will be. Uh, this webinar will be emailed to you all with a link uh, about a week from today, as well as will be posted on your student portal. So you'll be able to reference it and look back in case you need any of this information. Uh, I did see here there is a question about the uh, no air conditioning on campus. Uh, as you know, Yale is the second oldest Ivy League campus in the country. So even though it is a, the newest building on campus that we'll be staying in, they're very much trying to preserve the history of the building and the, the university as a whole. So no, it is not air conditioned and that's actually true of many universities out there. So to give the students the full collegiate experience, we are just recommending that they do bring a fan or purchase one before they come to the program to keep in their rooms. See one here about spending money when students are off-site. So that can be either in the form of cash or if they want to send a debit card with your student, that's fine as well. Uh, there is not an ATM on-site that will be at the campus. However, the different places where they are going off-site to crowdsource and get their meals, there will be if they need to take out money. So we usually say to give them at least enough money for one uh, meal a day as well as we'll be taking the students on a walk to the Yale bookstore. And we're sure that they'll probably want to spend some money to buy some Yale swag to bring back home and be able to impress the rest of their uh, classmates when they come back for school. So you might want to also give them an, a little bit extra money so they might be able to buy some souvenirs as well. There's also a question here about if there is a parent orientation happening during arrival day. We will have a staff member, our education lead, who is in charge of all of the curriculum and the advisor staff. That person will be available to answer any questions that might be happening during the arrival day process. So if you are traveling with your scholar to drop them off and you would like to meet with them and ask any of these questions, that would be a great opportunity to do so. We'll make sure that they are available at the registration tables throughout the duration of arrival day. Thank you again for sending in all these questions. We very much appreciate this. We want to help you as much as we possibly can. Uh, most of your questions, I will say, can probably be answered on the forms available on your student portal, most likely on the housing registration and travel form, which gives you great information about what the travel windows are to arrive to the program as well as registration, as well as our dress code and uh, planning checklist. That lets you know just what you might need to pack for your scholar, as well as what the dress code is going to look like. There are also pictures next to each of the dress code from previous business innovation programs where you can see our scholars actually in that attire. There's a question here about the weather in New Haven, Connecticut around uh, the time of the program. So it is going to be in July, so it's going to be warm pretty much anywhere here in the country. It is more of a drier heat, which is why we're really trying to encourage you to bring a fan with you, even an electric fan, something to make sure that you're keeping yourself uh, at a nice temperature throughout the day. I would say it ranges from anywhere from 60 to 80 degrees in July would 
definitely uh, recommend that you're checking the weather report for the time period or the session that your scholar is attending, but it shouldn't get over that uh, temperature. It's usually a pretty comfortable time. We will be doing quite a bit of walking throughout the program, as is normal for most of the college campuses where the students will be sleeping, might be a distance away from where the speaking event or the uh, plenary might be happening, as well as where the dining hall is. So we really do encourage wearing comfortable walking shoes as much as possible. And we make sure as much as possible that the students are in casual clothes in the evenings, just so they can feel a little bit more uh, comfortable and can let loose a little bit. So question about if a parent is staying nearby the university, if they're able to see their scholar. If you have a parent or if you have a family friend or any family or guardian that might be near the New Haven area and you would like for them to meet with your scholar, that is completely fine. You would ask that you fill out something called a program leave request form. That's also something that's available online on the student portal. That just lets us know that you're giving that person permission to take out your scholar for that specified amount of time. It also gives us information on when that plans on happening, when that person plans to take them out of the program, and for what time period, so we can make sure they come back on the time that they need to. And we'll also give you a call just to make sure that we have that verbal permission that the guardian, family, friend, or family member is able to take them out. We wanna make sure that it is someone that you are comfortable with and that the scholar is comfortable with leaving. So question here about what are some of the biggest takeaways from the scholars that attend the Business Innovation Program? I think one of the largest takeaways that they get is just a sense of independence. They are going to be in a dormitory, usually in a suite with a couple of other people. So they're gonna be staying away from home, perhaps for the first time. They're being a college campus, eating in a dining hall, walking the same path as many college students. So it really does feel like they are a college student for that time period. So they get a lot of independence from coming to the program. They also get a lot more sense of leadership. They'll be electing roles for the simulation and being able to come up with their own idea for a business product and taking a role as if they are starting a startup is something that they usually take away with them. We do have a lot of, of students that have come to the program and have continued on with their business ideas after they have left. We have some that have turned their ideas into actual businesses that you can find online and that are still being operated by the students. And we do find that sometimes based on their business pitches that they do find investors while they are crowdsourcing. So this it's, it's more than just a program where they are coming up with a fictitious business. They can really make this a reality and we try to impart that on them that they feel empowered enough to not only come up with this business plan, but be able to enact it, not only at our program, but also when they go back home. So question here about speaking topics and how the topics will be selected. So we try and have a number of speakers that are from different areas of business. Mostly they are entrepreneurs. This year we'll have someone who is one of the global client managers at Facebook. We'll also have someone who has started their own business and was featured in Forbes 30 Under 30. They're both very inspiring speakers who have spoken at our program in the past. We usually let them know to talk a little bit about themselves and their path and how they got to where they are now, as well as give some tips for the business simulation and just tips on how to be an entrepreneur and an innovator. As I mentioned earlier, we always allow students at least 30 minutes after they speak to be able to ask questions. So we really encourage students to look online on our website, see the biography of the speakers that will be coming, and already brainstorm some questions that they are curious about so they can get as many takeaways as they possibly can. So another question about the Shark Tank groups and how many people will be in them. So for our business group meetings, and that is the small groups where the advisor will have their own group of around 22 to 25 students. They'll be broken up into smaller Shark Tank groups. Those groups usually range from anywhere from three people to seven people, depending on the number of students in their group. And they'll be doing some get to know you activities on the first night, 
as well as brainstorming some business ideas, learning about their own personality styles and how that interacts with others. So they're more informed on how they can choose who else will be in their Shark Tank group. Another question here about the dormitory. So I'll again mention the name of the dormitory is called Polly Murray College. And that is um, easily found on a Google search. There are pictures and it has its own website. So you can see pictures of what the dorm looks like, of what the courtyard is on how you can get there. We also have some materials available on the student portal, but it is at a very nice location. It is um, pretty close to where a lot of our speaking events will be and the dining hall is located within the college. So our breakout rooms and the sleeping rooms and the, and the dining hall are all located within the same college. Another question again about the spending money for the scholars. So we would advise that you can send either cash or debit card. It really is whatever's most comfortable for you just as long as there is enough spending money for at least one meal per day and any souvenirs that they might want to pick up either while they are crowdsourcing in downtown Hartford or when we're going to the Yale bookstore. So it really is on your comfort level if you'd rather than have cash or you'd rather than have a debit card. I think what we're seeing most often in the past few years are more students coming with debit cards, but it really is as you would like it to be. We want to make sure that you're comfortable with how you're sending your scholars to the program. One thing that I'm not sure has been mentioned yet in the chat, but I did want to mention is our airport arrivals and our program shuttle. So the airport that we're using is Bradley International Airport, and that's located closer to Hartford. And it is around a 45 minute to an hour drive from there to New Haven. So there might be time where the students will arrive when the shuttle has already left. We will have two shuttles on arrival day. So as long as your, your student arrives in time for one of those, they shouldn't have too long of a wait, but it is quite a distance from the airport to the housing site. So when you are booking your scholars travel on departure day, please make sure that their flight is after 1 p.m. because our shuttle will not be leaving our campus until around 10, 1030. And with that distance, we do wanna make sure we get them to the airport at least two hours in advance of their flight time so they're able to get to security as well as get their boarding pass. And again, this webinar will be sent uh, one week from today. You'll be sent an email with the link to where this webinar will be housed. It will also be available on your student portal after a week from today. So if you have any other questions or if I may have answered a question you just might have forgotten between now and then, please wait until about next Tuesday for that email and you can go on and be able to view the recording at any time. I'll do one more call if there are any other questions that we can answer for you live here. Again, thank you so much for all of your questions. We wanna make sure that you and your scholar is prepared for the program as possible. So for the Shark Tank, again, the scholars will be uh, making their own determinations about who will be in their group. So we don't have our staff do that. We want to make sure the scholars have that autonomy to be able to make those decisions. So on the evening of the first night, we'll go through some personality type activities so they get to know themselves and how they best interact with other personalities on a team as well as a couple of team building activities so they see who they might interact with best. And then the second day of the program is where they will select the teams themselves and then come up and innovate their own ideas for a business idea or product. Okay, I think we're ending toward the end of our questions. Thank you again for being so active in the chat and asking these questions. Most of the information that you have been asking will be found online at our student portal. But we also want to make a plug that if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to our Office of Admissions. It can be based on anything that we spoke about here today or maybe some topics that weren't yet touched on. The contact information is listed on this slide. 
Thank you so much for being able to come to this webinar today. Thank you for asking these great questions. Please feel free to reach out to the Office of Admissions if you have any other questions. We want to hear from you and make sure that you are as comfortable as possible. But thank you again for your time, and we look forward to meeting your scholars soon and providing them with the experience of a lifetime.